finish each other's sandwiches It's a quote from our favorite show Finish each other's sandwiches So now we claim it for our own It's such a broad topic. An animal but. that has a cast. Oh, no, none of those things. Oh, like a little little I cast know. on his paw. Like, there was a picture on Instagram that's like, why are animals so cute when they have casts? And it was like a donkey and his arms were all straight. And he was oh, like, no. Oh. But Snickers had a cast when she was born. Well, not when she was born. Like, after she was born. <laughs> she was born she with a cast. She wasn't born with a cast. <laughs> she was a mummy. I was. I thought the same thing. Yeah, I, I was like, she was like a mummy. Yeah, like why would that? Like that's not. That's the opposite. That, that's that's in death. That's like, the last spot. Yeah, yeah. That's the last thing you would do. That's the last thing. Cat mummy. Well, cats were buried with people. Shay. That's we're, true. I'm already going to introduce Snickers' voice. I thought they were, the guardians. Didn't they guard the tombs? Well, lots of things did. They they yeah. they went with them. They guarded the tombs, and then the dogs did too. And so there were dogs. They were Dobermans. Yeah, dogs that were mummified, and then cats, but mostly mouse because um they were they were domesticated and they were revered because they right. they got rid of all the um specifically they got rid of like all the rodents that were around them, which caused caused sickness. So they saw them uh. as things that like kept away like illness and things but then the mow mows ate them and then the mow mows yeah. no no snickers killed two mice with her bear paws she in did. the span of like 24 her hours her bear paws yes i did but have you her seen cat a mouse paws. yeah has there been a mouse in the house <laughs> there, that's like the beginning of a show is there a mouse in the house <laughs> wiping around Wipe the, the house the house <laughs> oh god so you're an idiot, idiot. <laughs> all right um it. okay let's so do we wanted to talk about animals we go on lots of trips we make lots of jokes about animals we see animals on our trips animals are things that exist i think we we could start it with we're animal lovers like we both first we, and foremost we are like i mostly like the, i was always been a dog dog lover. i've always I've, been a dog i've always been a dog um <laughs> lover i know it's weird like i'm a human but i feel like i've always been a, like it's a transgender thing like i feel like i should be transitioning into a dog i've always felt like i'm really a dog like i've always <laughs> peed, i've always like <laughs> i've always I, peed on fire hydrants right it's like i associate mostly with being with a dog right yeah I I you I know, was born a man, but I'm really a dog. It was probably around like when I when I was five, and I realized like that I really liked rubbing my butt on the carpet. Like yeah, like do- dog. <laughs> like I feel like I'm a dog. Um, I was born a man, but I'm really I'm really a dog. I really I- feel like this is a new movement, like LGBTD, like community, like lesbian, gay, transsexual, bisexual. Dog. 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 <laughs> like, but you're a human being, Dad. You can never be a Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's really funny. I like that idea. I think that's that definitely could be a, a skit or something. That could be a joke. I like that. I just wish society would accept me as the dog that I feel like I really am. I think that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, we have seen. He's been a dog lover. We've uh, So we've been going through all throughout Colorado going on tons of camping trips and hiking and driving around and stuff like that. And usually like any given time we go to on any hike, our, our main goal is to see some sort of animal. Mm -hmm. Like we're usually like, Oh, I can't wait. You know, I hope we see it. You know, we went to Aspen. We hope to see a moose. We, you know, we went to whatever and we're like, Oh, we hope we see a bear. We see things like we love animals. We do. And like, that's like our main goal. Like we want to see, of course we want to see the foliage. We want to see the mountains. We want to see everything. We love nature in general, but what we, the most thing we love about nature is the little animals. Cute little animals. Your favorite animal is a bunny or a rabbit. Mm -hmm. Um, you, mine is a moose or a bear. I kind of feel like both are, they're, they're neck and neck, but you know, I love the large mammals and I, you do too. And we both love, you know, all animals we love. We really do. Mm-hmm. Except for birds. Birds are bullshit. Birds but, are, but that's another podcast. Yeah, but that's okay. But we, you mostly, we, we care mostly about our, our, our furry four legged friends. Our furry friends. friends, our mammal friends. Yeah. Um, but, so we've been, and we had went to, I mean, just any given state park, 
or any given Sunday. We went to a state forest state park and um, that's a really cool place. It's like just west of Rocky Mountain National Park on the uh, the other side of that area, like on the other side of Trail Ridge Road, but then sort of like in between these like never summer wilderness and this little like in between area, which is really very, very desolate. Like we took a, a, a dirt road there and um, it has the highest moose population in the state of Colorado. And it's really tucked away. Probably like what we decided was the most um, desolate wilderness that we've ever been to the most detached from society that we've been. Yeah. We were, we, when we camped there, we had pulled in, we had drove on this dirt road for miles and miles. And then we went in there and we saw like two, maybe two other people or whatever. But once we like drove completely into the park, we had pulled, went to where I had looked up beforehand. I was like, Ooh, we'll camp like right over here. Mm-hmm. And it was, we, where we were camping, there weren't people for miles. No, there miles. was nobody. And we hiked and didn't see anybody. And we and hiked that was all it. day the next day and we didn't see a single person until the very end of the day. And right. I was and like, they, this is really in, like out there, like in the wilderness. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the, this is a place that people just aren't, aren't right now. Like, it and, was and it so was in the amazing. De- middle of summer. Like this is like, it was pro- 4th of July weekend. It was prime. I don't, was yes, it? It was just, well, because the 4th of July was. It was around that time. Was, but either yeah. way, it's peak time for people to be out in the mountains and hiking and there was nobody there. Mm-hmm. So that just proved how in the middle of nowhere it was. Mm-hmm. It really was. And it was, it was just amazing. And like, we were just detached from everything. Um, but it, yeah, so obviously I knew I wanted to bring Joe there and I'd looked into it because of the name Never Summer Wilderness and State Forest State Park had the highest moose population. Mostly because you hate summer. Yeah, I know. And never if, summer if, is perfect. If it could ever never be summer, <laughs> then ever never be summer. It was ever never summer. <laughs> if there was ever never, if a there summer. was ever never a summer, the never a summer there would have never been. <laughs> but yeah, it, uh, we it sucks. Summer is retarded. But we all that was where we also saw a bear, right? Yes. So first and foremost, um, we saw a moose. Do you want to tell them how you saw a moose? It was so cute. He That's was. <laughs> yeah, he was, <laughs> he was sitting amongst the aspen trees and he was just staring was at us and we heard his little hooves walking on the yeah. road. I, w- I woke up to the sound of like a cloppity clop. I had heard like just like a rummaging and I was like, I think that's a moose. I'm like, it has to be. Mm -hmm. And I like, I was like, what else could it be? It was, it's just, it sounded big. You know what I mean? Like you could just tell it had like a presence. Mm -hmm. And so I just like, I I slowly unzipped the the tent and I looked out and I was like, there he is. And he was like an adolescent moose and he was like lanky and and like skinny and cute. And he, yeah. And he like saw me and then he was just kind of like walking around and then I got, I got out and watched him and he walked away. Um, he was so cute. It was cute. And then we saw more and stuff like that. I think the most we saw was that grand, um, Another stupid name. What is it? What? The Golden Gate Canyon State Park. Well, the that most was the we saw one. was Golden Gate Canyon State we woke Park. Up that to was them a family our, of moose. Yes, it was a whole family. And we so heard their cute. antlers knocking against the trees <laughs> and, and stuff like, like that. Mm-hmm, and they're like, mm-hmm. yeah. They were <laughs> so noisy and so clumsy. And they were just like eating leaves the whole night. They and, really like, are clumsy. Just, yeah. And their antlers were just like brushing against the trees. And like they couldn't even move around without like clinking around. Like, yeah. Like, like in a kitchen full of pots and pans. And it's were, like when it's like somebody has like uh, like a bag bag of shells and they're like, like just like mm-hmm. crumbling them up like that's what it so sounds like noise. just like clanking against things and then they like move their antlers and it's like clunks against the tree like they're just they're like goofy mm-hmm. they're just such a goofy they animal these big noses and they're just they're just ridiculous and we always keep our distance and respect them and um and then also on this trip we saw um we were uh in the car and then I turned around and in the mirror the rear view mirror I saw a red fox and I had never oh, seen yeah. a red fox like that up close before and he had like the big bushy tail and like the whole like fox appear you know the, you know, the appearance a fox of a fox like. yeah no but like what a Japanese girl would have for a purse was the animal that I saw behind <laughs> me like it was like a total total red fox like it was and, awesome and then Joe got out of the car and like walked towards him and then they had like a little stare down and, and then he like like walked away into the forest and it was so cute it was really cute but it was cool because like I walked up to him and like I slowly he kind of was walking away and he like went into like this little like open area like a like kind of like a field back behind our campsite and I walked up to him and I like crouched down and I slowly walked up and then he turned around and looked at me and he actually took a few steps towards me just kind of like checking me out like being curious and mm-hmm. he was just like oh he was like looking at me and I looked back at him and we kind of like just were like looking at each other and then 
like he slowly kind of like, all right, you're, we're cool. And like turned around and like was like walking around and like mm-hmm. went around the tree and then like went into back into the forest. And I was like, I was, and like we just kind of had like a, a moment where we're like, all right, we're both animals essentially you yeah. know like he wasn't scared of me no um, he felt like your energy and that's how i feel like the cool. fox was that we saw in crested butte he like we we saw another fox in crested butte we saw it twice and it, they're used to people because they if they're yeah, hanging around at campgrounds they then they're know. used to people being around i guess this one maybe was used to be he probably had seen people yeah. but i don't think they see a lot and like but not a lot by any means like and uh, then we saw another one when we, when we went to Crested Butte and he turned around and his little ears were so cute and his eyes. And then we saw him walking in the campsite. It was so adorable. It was awesome. But was uh, cool. what other animals have we seen? Oh, well, we saw the bear in that trip. We did see him. I, he was just walking. He was like being all lumbering around. Yeah. He was walking down the trail and he was he was Eating cool. Eating stuff. Um, I couldn't really get a good look at him. He was far away. But yeah. He, the, the bears are like actually kind of hard to, to spot. They on, really on, are. They really are hard to see People in Colorado. People talk about them like eating your trash and like how be bear aware, but like I'm as aware as possible and I've never <laughs> seen one. I'm like I'm where? I'm as bear aware as, as a bear can be. And it doesn't, I'm like I bear aware, <laughs> like W-H-E-R. Where aware where is the are bear. the bears? Oh God. All right. <laughs> so, okay. Your, one of your favorite animals is a fairly unknown animal. It's called the pika. And it's uh. They're only in alpine tundra areas, right. so they're only like above tree line, like essentially 12, between feet. eleven and and fourteen thousand feet. Mm-hmm. So, like, really, the only places you could see them would be like the Rocky Mountains or uh, any maybe the Pacific Northwest. You but can like, see you them have here, to be like Wyoming, like Montana, anything or nothing. You know, if there's anything, like those big Rocky Mountain areas, anything that isn't over eleven thousand feet, they're not going to be because mm-hmm. they they don't go really below that. Um, they are cute. They are like little. They look like a mix between, I guess, like a mouse, a mouse and a bunny, but without a long tail. They're they're really cute though. Like we'll put up a picture of one or something like that. But mm-hmm. we had taken some video, but we had seen we've seen them uh, quite a few trips that we've been on. But the most recent one we went to uh, at the Quinella Pass hike that we did was really cool because they there were just so many. It Thankfully, was, it was like. There was a whole like there should have been more village of of pika. They were all just running around their rocks and collecting their flowers and stuff like making their nests and stuff like that. And they're really they they're just like cute little guys and they all like beep at you and stuff like that. <laughs> they uh they're cute, but they're um they're not endangered, but they're it's because of the whole global warming thing. They're well, they're definitely at risk for being endangered. And yeah, like, I don't even want to think about it because it makes me so sad. But their numbers are at risk, and yeah. they um, it's getting warmer. They're moving they're, higher up into the mountains because it's so warm down there, and you know, so stop driving SUVs and stop not recycling shit. Um, it but was they're the, they're really important because they show a plethora of pika. There were so many, and they're really important because they show. If they're in a good area where they're supposed to be, it means that the grass is growing properly there and that they're getting enough rain and that they're getting enough sunlight. And it's just, they're a good indication on how well the environment's doing in that area. So if you see a pika, it's a good sign, you yeah. know? And it's, so we did. We saw the little pika and they were beeping around. And, uh, <laughs> but on the same trip, we also saw um, more circle of life. Uh, oh, God, in, yeah. In which, uh, so there's marmots, which also are like a big kind of like rodent animal that, that lives in the tundra. They kind of look like gophers They're or like, like gophers. Be- beaver kind of things. And they whistle and they, <laughs> yeah, they they just like hang out on the rocks and like scurry around and um but they're like pretty big i mean they're like the size they're like a cat they're size. like a big yeah like kind of like a big cat wow. and, but they're like fat they're like cuz the thing is they live up in the tundra so they have to have a lot of fat on their body to keep warm mm-hmm. and they're like these like real, they're like when they walk you like see like they're fat like moving and they just look like <laughs> fat like beavers yeah they really do <laughs> they're funny looking but they're they're cute and they they they're always like hopping around mm-hmm. on the rocks and stuff like that. But we saw one and then we like, then we heard one then like in the distance, like way up the mountain, like we had been up pretty far, but it, you know, kept we were going. probably like 13,000 feet, but we saw, we, she, she was like, what is that? And I heard like, kind of, it sounded like a screaming and we were like, what is that weird noise? And we, and she's like, Oh my God, it's a wolf. And you like you looked up and you had seen and it was it looked like a dog but like from far away but it was it was a wolf and it caught a marmot mm-hmm. it had it grabbed it must have grabbed it by the neck or whatever and like killed it and yeah. it was like this is my food and it was bringing, dragged it up the mountain and it was it grabbed it you know killed it and started walking up 
back up on the other side over up and over the mountain to I guess bring it to, back to its den or whatever yeah, for but sure. we had heard I was like we just heard like a marmot the death, death. Yeah. Um, we just we watched and basically witnessed like you know this wolf catch this other animal and it was like this is my food for the night mm-hmm. and it was kind of like a really cool like it's like you know like as realization much as, and it's like I you know if the wolf didn't kill the marmot the, the wolf would die and so mm-hmm. like you kind of have to think like you know these animals have to it's a circle of life it's whatever it's 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 the food chain or mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it but it was kind of like a cool thing to be in a part of because it was just us we were sitting up, we were we had just hiked up the mountain and other people had been on the trail up and down or whatever we weren't completely alone but we were in the moment we were we were just like by ourselves up in this little rock pile and we had mm-hmm. seen all the pika walking around and we Ooh. watched you know a kind of a very natural thing happened and it was a very cool part to be a part of nature in that in that moment mm-hmm. it, it was, was like, awesome i wish we could have been closer to the wolf because i've never really been close to a wolf yeah like that. we had seen we see coyotes all the time there's always coyotes and they're like totally harmless but yeah they're cute people seem to they think coyotes like are harmful but they're not but um yeah they're always trying to catch road runners yeah <laughs> but it was really awesome yeah we saw, we saw another like, thing was the squirrel yeah we were walking when we were hiking and like there's squirrels everywhere but like they're tip they're very typical but these thing. are like mountain squirrels yeah i mean they yeah you see them like well, they're like a little extra fuzzy i suppose um they have shorter tails yeah but we were hiking and all of a sudden the squirrel like <laughs> ran down the tree and we, he was like mad that we were like there. He, like, like we kind of us, like, what the f- are you doing over here? Yeah. We were like invading his space or something mm-hmm. like that. And, uh, <laughs> and he like scurried up the tree and then like, like, like paused and then turned around and let out this like brave heart warrior scream of like a, a squirrel. Like, cause like the, the sound you hear in the woods most of the time is like this. The sh- <laughs> Yeah, like you don't, you don't, that's a squirrel. squirrel. That's, that's squirrel. That they make those noises. And like, it was so, so funny because he came right up to us, looked right at us, stood on the the branch and we were very close to him and we just saw him open his mouth and he's like, like yeah. oh my God. Like it was like screaming right. at us. Like we were, he was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, he was. And then we're like, okay, buddy, we don't want any trouble. Yeah. He was like mad at us. Like he, he ran like, up to us. He's like, what are the hell are you guys doing? You yeah. better get the fuck out of here. <laughs> he was like an angry Asian man yelling at us to like get off his mic. Go right, Yeah. But he yeah. was, he was mad at he us. He, he, and he wanted to let us know about it. So he screamed so at us. So we turned around and left. So we left. But, he, he he got his way because we were like, all right, we're sorry, man. We're out of here. But he was so cute. But yeah, we'll so. put up. A, we're gonna put up a video of all the, the the trails and stuff that we went on, and that'll be like the next uh, video, video blog cast, in, yeah, in a series. But uh, I don't think we don't really we oh we do have a video of the pika, so that'll be on there. Yeah. But we don't have a video of uh, the squirrel screaming at us. No, but um, but so uh, speaking. Speaking of bunnies, um, so we've done some traveling. Bunnies. We've, tra- we've talked a little bit about um, our trips back to Massachusetts and like our trips um, out west. And uh, one of the trips out west involved us going back to uh, Black Canyon of the Gunnison when we went to Telluride. Mm-hmm. And uh, there were a lot of little bunnies there and the little like foothills of the mountains. And we went to... Um, My favorite thing about any place that we go are like the nature trails, which mm-hmm. are usually like maybe a mile loop no elevation gain and there's like little markers along the way that you take like a little pamphlet with for you children. and it's it's absolutely for children like for little kids and then like you pick a pamphlet with you and it has numbers and you walk up and there's like a little marker it's so much fun and like it has a marker tells you the number and you read off the pamphlet and it's like a little fun fact about that particular area whether it be the tree that you're looking at or like the overlook or the animals in that area and it's always just like a little informative packet that tells you about that like little yeah. hike and I'm like these are my favorite and like every time we go somewhere I'm like is there a nature trail like even though we do like the hard like you know seven eight mile like high inclination like hikes i'm always like where's my nature trail where i go maybe a mile on flat ground and that, learn fun yeah. facts about the area that's like marked by paw prints that you have to find yeah. on each like, yeah yeah one it's through usually 10. an animal like associated with the the trail no they're they're awesome and uh, so we did one. We did one in Black Canyon of the Gunnison, um, which we didn't get to do our previous time there. And uh, on our way out, we went to the bathroom and there were like all these bunnies around the bathroom. And like for <laughs> yeah. some reason, we like made a joke about like the bunny sitting out front. And we're like, oh, there's he little, has like a there's thick a little Brooklyn bunny. accent. Yeah. 
He's like, we're like, oh, look at this little bathroom bunny. And then he's uh, he's sitting out there and he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm a bathroom bunny. My dad was a bathroom bunny. His dad was a bathroom bunny. <laughs> it's all I know. I just know. I don't know nothing else except how to be a bathroom bunny. My dad was a bathroom bunny. Bathroom bunny. I'm a bathroom bunny. <laughs> my kid's going to be a bathroom bunny. <laughs> like, it's, uh, it's in my blood, you know. Like there's. <laughs> to do what? Like what do you do? Change the toilet They have like paper? hard like chain smoking like yeah. breath like they're blue collar bunnies yeah they're blue collar bunnies and they they're like yes what i do is my job i'm a bathroom bunny i'm a bathroom bunny and then we saw more bunnies and we visited massachusetts and we were like we imagined like the the bunny like walked up to him, us and he's like he's like yes come on follow me we're this is the right place to be like he's follow us into the woods hopping away and he's like he's like you've come to the right place to find a home and he's hopping away and we're like thanks bunny <laughs> Thanks for leading us to our future home. <laughs> um, so you you love bunnies. They are your favorite animal. And mm-hmm. you grew up and you had uh, your your good friend Kelsey had had rabbits and, yeah. and stuff like that. So like you have like this background with it. I didn't really have a background with, with rabbits or background bunnies. bunnies. Background bunnies. I'm a background bunny. <laughs> um, but this kind of weird thing, like my little sister, they and my stepmom found a bunny. I believe the story was that they, they were like, walking or something like I don't forget the whole story but they found a baby bunny in the grass and Marissa was like oh my god like look at this bunny and they picked it up and they they put it in the car and then they drove it to a vet and they were like you know we found this bunny we don't know what to do and they were she's like I kind of want to keep it like it's so cute and uh, it just ended up getting into it and they were like well no you know we'll take care of this bunny but if you're interested in in a rabbit we know a rabbit rescue and stuff like that and it just ended up being a thing and so we got a rabbit and it was Mm -hmm. something that like I had never really like I think my neighbor had a rabbit when I was growing up but I I didn't care much about I was like oh whatever they're rabbits I I didn't it wasn't anything that meant anything to me but my little sister was kind of just like very uh, enamored by that she was like oh this kid's so cute like a little baby Mm -hmm. bunny so they got a little bunny and they named it Ginger and so we she still lives in New York, and so she's got her little. Ginger lives in New York. She uh, she's got her cage, and she has free roam of the house, and she oh, acts yeah. very much like a cat or even she a has, dog sometimes. She has like top notch medical care. She is a uh, she is the pet of of the the Cronin family, and it's 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 very cute, and she's she's an awesome she's an awesome pet. But mm-hmm. like it's she's but still it's just it's a rabbit. It's not a dog. It's mm-hmm. not a cat. It's something that you just. It's it doesn't just, give anything back to you. It's a. Mm-hmm. It's a rodent. You know, like mm-hmm. I'm just like I. And as cute as it is, it's still. It's not the kind of pet that you give all of your like love and energy to. Mm-hmm. Like in my opinion, right. I think she's so. But cute. my dad feels otherwise. Your dad is extremely attached to Ginger, and like. <laughs> For for example, um, when we were visiting, like he'll we, play it off like he's not like it's like, like ah, oh, it's just you know, a rat. she's a cute. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, she's cute. But let me tell you, yeah, no, he's he loves her and he'll do anything for her. And like we like we saw this commercial that like there was like some food recalled that like James baby James like to his little brother had just eaten and he and we're like oh my god didn't James just eat this food like it was like yeah some plastic was in the was in the snack it was like one of those like snack pack like you know whatever and he's like he's like ah little plastic won't hurt him he's fine and then later that day like Ginger like had like gone under the chair and he's like where is she we got to find her well well, is she gonna get out like we got to be careful like we don't want to yeah we got to get her out like uh, where is she like this kid this can't be happening. <laughs> like it's, she's in danger. Like it's he, basically the whole thing is that he definitely cares so much about this animal more so than probably his own children. Yeah, he loves Ginger. <laughs> he loves this friggin' bunny. Like always make sure that she's like, oh, it's too cold out. You got it. You got to let Ginger in. But then, like, the kids are in the house, like, oh, my God, it's so hot. I'm, like, dripping sweat. Like, can I put the air conditioner on? I was like, no, you can't put the air conditioner we gotta on. got to save money. But if he leaves the house and it's hot, you'll put the air conditioner on for the for Ginger, for Ginger. in the house to make sure that she's not too hot. <laughs> so let me just say, like, that's – this is the line that we're drawing. It's like the kids can be uncomfortable, but not Ginger. No, no. Ginger, Ginger has, the, has a high quality of life, high quality. And uh, she's and taken care of. What was the grandpa with? Bunny? She knows a guy. And then my grandpa, it's even funnier because he just like he, you know, he's an old Irish man. And, he, you know, he just doesn't have like he's not thick with emotions. No. He's definitely not like uh, affectionate and stuff like that. He's just kind of like, you know, he's just a stern grandpa. But he um, 
it's so funny to watch him. He sits on the couch and Ginger hops around the house and she just kind of has free roam with the house and she hops around and he thinks it's like the funniest thing. He sits on the couch and just sits there with his hand on his like like thighs and just watches Ginger jump around. He's like, oh, 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 look at the oh, look at the bunnies. <laughs> like he thinks it's the funniest thing. He just watches Ginger hop around and it's like beyond entertainment. Like the TV's on not even watching it. No. He's just watching Ginger hop around the house and he's like couldn't be more enthralled by this. He's just like, oh, look at the, oh, look at the bunnies oh, hopping the around. Bunny. It's so funny. Like he thinks it's, it's like the, the funniest thing. the light of his like, life. It really I love is. it. That's perfect. That's so funny. And then, uh, and then in line with another person who's been around Ginger, who's an unlikely character, uh, is, is our motorcycle like friend Duke. Oh and yeah. He's amazing. And he's like my the dad, one of my guy. dad's childhood best friends. They were all, uh, bikers, like motorcycle, uh, Riders totally and stuff like, like that. Tat, tatted out, like yep. leather wearing, like old, like union working, like <laughs> like Harley driving. Hard guy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like guy from New York. Like his name is Duke, but it's not even his real name. And like they call him Duke. They call yeah. him Duke, and he like watched the bunny while they went yeah. out of town. My dad made sure that he like Duke went over there every day yeah. to feed her, let her out. Yeah, but it's you. <laughs> It's a bunny. <laughs> it's a bunny. And like, but the best part was that Ginger, like when she does get out, she yeah. just kind of has free run over the house and walks around, <laughs> but she can get like, like she hides and she goes and goes under things. So Duke, who has, who's been in motorcycle accidents, yeah. has like surgery, like screws in his back, is chasing <laughs> Ginger around the house trying to get her back in the cage for like hours. Just like like trying to get yeah, trying to get the bunny out from like behind the couch and underneath yeah. it. But like th- this is his day. Like he like has to spend the day three stooges catching the bunny throughout the house. And it's like he's got his leather like yeah. fucking like angels uh hell's angels like leather jacket hell's on. Angels. And like yeah. he's like look and like he's trying to catch this like tiny bunny. Yeah. <laughs> like fumbling around trying to catch this like wild bunny. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous. It's it was funny, when we heard that. I w- it was like that's fantastic. I wish I could find a video. Like a, there could be a, a video of that, like a home footage of Duke chasing around Ginger. It's amazing. Um, we, we have to- other things, but we're kind of at our half hour point. Um, we, we can, can leave kinda, it. We can kind of we can cap make this like off. a bunny cast. It was a lot about animals, but we didn't really get into Snickers um, or bats. And bats. We but we can seen, we can save that for another time. Yeah, I mean, we we saw a bunch of bats at no, Carl's we bed. Let Snickers finish the animal cash. We got to see a uh, bats um, talk and like demonstration at Denver Science Museum, which was really cool. Mm-hmm. And it, bats just have been something of fascination. We'll expound of mine. upon that. And then we always just make jokes with Snickers. Yeah. I feel like Snickers will always be. In our podcast and always just be in our, we'll be in like, our hearts, you know, the highlight of what we do. We, we, we have, a, we have a voice for her. She has a personality. Mm-hmm. She has an attitude <laughs> and stuff like that. And Snickers, she gets vulgar when we talk about, when, when we think about, we're like, oh, Snickers, uh, you know, she like walks around the house and she's just a cat. She's just a normal cat and she's fairly well behaved. <laughs> she begs for food a lot, but like, you know, she's food motivated of all things, but like, we'll just imagine her being like, like Snickers, her voice is, uh, yeah. And we yeah. Can do it. She'll be like, we'll like make a joke. We're like Snickers, you doing all right? She's like, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I, I got some fucking problems. I, mean, I got some fucking problems. <laughs> I, 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 could use I need some, some, I need some fucking help. I need some fucking help. But she has a little cat cigarette and she's like, has like, <laughs> like a, she needs to go to rehab. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's like, yeah, I need some fucking help. Yeah, if you can you know, just throw some fucking food at me before I eat my own fucking tail, yeah. that'd be nice, you know. And then we'd like make jokes about her like feeling neglected and we're like, we're like, oh, Snickers, you want us to open the window for you? Like, yeah, it's about fucking time. God I'm pretty damn. fucking hot. I'm sweating my fucking like, balls off yeah. here. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, you think you're ever going to come goddamn home? God damn it. It's like, Jesus, Snickers, like, calm down. And like, then like, Joe. This cute little innocent cat. She's like, so she gets, sweet. She's really vulgar, though, like in yeah. our in our. In our she minds. like says the F word and has like a smoking <laughs> habit. <laughs> she's a good cat though. She she's is. Good. I want to talk more about her though. She's well behaved time. and uh, I'm glad that and she's And she a- loves you and she's just so, she loves Joe so much and she's so close to him and she, like, she sleeps on his chest and yeah, she's, she's a good she kitty cat. She is a good cat. cat but she's very food motivated. It's so funny. Like anytime we walk around, she like meows and like brings you to the kitchen she like mm-hmm. she's like no 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 this way this is where my food yeah, bowl yeah, is she's yeah. like she's like mow oh mow you get my mama mow like, <laughs> and, like always trying to get us 
<laughs> yeah, like trying to get us into the kitchen and feed her and stuff like that. Uh, she's entertaining though. Yeah, she's, she's a good she's cat. The best. She's a good kitty kitty. She Shout gets out along to with Snickers. all of our dogs. Yeah. Shout out to Snickers. But well, we'll talk more about her another time. We'll yeah. We'll make like a more of a pet cast and because there's lots of funny things we have to say about Snickers. We, yeah, there's <laughs> things we to have, come. We have many a Snicker stories. It doesn't end there. <laughs> it never ends. <laughs> Thanks but, for listening to us talk about animals. But we, yeah, yeah we love animals. We're not vegetarians. We eat animals. We mm-hmm. love animals in all forms. Uh, out. I like animals whether they're fuzzy and alive. free and, uh, and my skinned plate. and cooked and in my belly. So, I know. Uh, fuck, I don't know. I, fuck I, it. <laughs> fuck it. I love animals and I love eating animals, so I don't give a shit. Sorry, guys. Uh, I don't feel bad eating chickens though, because whatever. Chickens are kind of weird. Yeah, like, any, they're any cute bird. When they're I'm just like I'm not on board. I, I don't I don't really care about birds. Yeah, their feet are like really scary looking. Like they're like the skin, like like chicken feet, chicken wrinkly skin, chicken lips, and like their their nails, like it's fucked up yeah, the way their legs look. Looking. Like I'd rather those be like something I don't see, like but in my mouth, <laughs> but in my mouth. Like they deserve to not have fingers and yeah. toes. Like those are weird things to fingers see. Fingers and toes. And their beaks and their eyes and everything. It's fucked up. All right. And you met penguins. That was the other thing we were going to talk about. That's okay though. You like penguins and you met penguins, which is really cool. We will have more time another time. Um, but I think that's time it. Time after we, time. We, I don't like to go much further than a half hour. That's all right. That's Thanks, more than gosh. enough time to hear us fucking talk about stupid shit. So uh, thanks for listening. Um, yeah. I think that's it. Animals are things that we love. Animals are things. Animals are things. And that's Person, a, place, yeah. thing, animal. Animals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. All right. That's it for us. Have a good night, day, weekend. Shank. Uh, Whenever it is you're listening to this. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Talk again soon. Goodbye. <laughs>